And again, see I'm just wisping up leaves. Um, and I made those marks up there, so I know that I want to take this at least up that far. And again, make sure you're curving. Um, nothing grows straight up and down. Okay, that doesn't have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be clear to the bottom either. Okay, um, I'm going to add a little bit more green in there because it is the front. Okay, there we go. We're going to switch over to some. Um, Clean our brush, switch over to some of the pale pink. And again, I'm going to pick up some white. And now, once again, too, um, if you go on or go into the craft stores, there's all kinds of practice um, and idea books for this. Um, and you can go ahead and pick those up and practice. Um, I do another class where it's called Seaside Sojourn, where we actually do a um, seaside scape cake. So I started out, you know, you start out easy. Don't, um, a lot of people want to start out, they always ask about those roses. And to be honest with you, I would not start out with that. Those are difficult. Start out easy, get your sea legs, then once you get your confidence, then you could start moving on to better things, bigger and better things. All right, we're going to add a little bit of violet in there. And again, make sure that you push that brush out. Here's some violet. And again, I'm still on that same plate. It's getting close to uh, messed up, but you don't need to, um, like I said, if you're painting the plate, you're in trouble. Okay. And normally when you're doing this as well, if you don't have this turntable, you might want to um, elevate this. Um, it's really hard to get down flat on the sides. And I'm even struggling with this at a point, but it, this doesn't that look busy it looks like a, a little green foliage area um, I'm gonna add some more yellow in there because I obviously did that in the front to tie that in and we are just about done with that okay here we go perfect now also I have painted pedophores and I do have to let you know that um, and we'll talk to Michael about this but you can paint on chocolate people are gonna go what can you do with this and what surfaces does it work on? It does work on chocolate, but you have to add a blending powder and it's a blending powder that right now um, it's going through some protection rights because there isn't anything on the market like it. Um, but you can, when you add powder into this, um, it allows it, it gives it a tooth to hold on to. So I've also painted on, um, on chocolates as well. Um, Doing it this way, you're kind of a limited to um, uh, non-porous surfaces. So on this, you could do it on fondant, but if you're gonna use rolled buttercream, chocolate, anything in that realm, um, you're gonna have to have this blending medium. And we're working on that right now, as I said. So um, I'll keep in contact with Michael on that, or if those of you wanna get in contact with me and need it right away, I can, um, I can send that out to you. I don't have a problem with that. But this can, um, we're not limited to any surface now. So I've painted pedophores, um, cookies. What's really neat about this is to do sugar cookies, put fondant on it and paint the cookies. I've done that for Christmas. You can do holly, you can do Christmas bells. I've done snowman are really fun to do. Okay, it looks like we're just about there. Now, the only thing I'm gonna add on to this is if you look here, we've got some little wispy grass pieces. So again, we're gonna pull out some green and we're gonna do that ink that ink combo and I'm going to pull some white in because I don't want that to be exactly the same color as the grass. Again, you want to break that up a little bit. And again, pinky up, just kind of bring those and they don't have to be perfect. Okay. And normally if you've got wispy grass, it, there has to be at least two um, pieces going up on that. This one will take it up to three. So I, I'm going to call that done. 